Everything upon which we rely on has been designed and built, from intensive farming to the car, to the computer, to the camera lens. We live in a world of connections, and the world has been made smaller through the use of the telephone, the internet, and air travel. Societies have been brought together, choices become diverse, cultures from all over the world are now living together, and at the heart of this, the aeroplane. Aircraft need to carry ever-increasing numbers of people, and they need to do so as efficiently as possible. Now, to develop new aircraft, we need a huge amount of innovation and design. That involves hundreds of teams of people working together to bring their expertise in line to create a complex and intricate working whole. For example, back in 2003, I worked on Emirates First Class Interiors. Now, this was a big challenge, getting a fully reclining armchair, a desk, a wardrobe, a minibar and a 23-inch TV into a 2 by one metre space. This whole cabin needed to be comfortable, accessible and easily maintainable. My name is Ben and ever since I watched Back to the Future as a kid and saw Doc Brown come up with his crazy designs, I knew I wanted to be an inventor. So I did a degree in mechanical engineering. I'm now a design engineer at Goodrich Actuation Systems. I'm working on the thrust reverser project for the Airbus A350. And this is where I work. This is my equivalent of Doc Brown's workshop. If you consider the average weight of an aircraft is 180 tonnes, when that comes into land at 150 miles an hour, that's a lot of weight we've got to stop. Not only do we have landing gear brakes, but we've got a thrust reverser system. The thrust reverser is built into the side of the engine, opens up aperture, which the air rushing out the back is then redirected forwards, decelerating the plane in a shorter distance, enabling us to have shorter runways. So to go about designing something like this, you've got to sit down and look where are the logical places for all the components to actually sit and interact with each other. Down here, it's pretty tight around here. Might have to relieve that object in there. As I'm designing a structure, it has to withstand a certain load. There will be certain areas in my design we can take material out of that, the saving weight. Obviously, the, there will be areas that there'll be stress concentrations. We, we've got to keep that weight in there or even add extra material to support the load structure in that sort of area. Now, for example, if I get some information from the stress engineers saying this area is a bit of a weak point, we can add extra material into this rib here to reinforce this section. So once we've designed the parts, it comes over here and the manufacturing guys here take that drawing and actually make the components. The machine behind me is making hydraulic bowel blocks. Basically, we put in a hunk of metal, goes in here, five axis machining, and at the end of it, we get a piece like this. This piece here is part of the actuator that moves the tail fin on an A330. So I could be designing something, but over here, they're actually manufacturing the parts that I've designed. Now, I used to work at Jaguar Land Rover. It's the greatest feeling in the world when you can see something that you've designed out on the street today. This car, the XF, I was involved in designing the cooling system. I spent two years developing components that are under this bonnet here. And it's just amazing just to see it in front of me now. I think people should get involved in engineering. Use your creativity, get out there, develop things that are going to help people, going to give people enjoyment. They're going to help the world, make things more efficient. It's your skills and techniques that are going to be able to do that. So give it a go. Everything that moves or does something has been designed by someone. If you choose to be an engineer, you're choosing to improve the world and the future. Take the scramjet, for example. Now, you could choose to be a part of bringing this technology into commercial flights. That means you could fly from London to Sydney in just 90 minutes. If you've got what it takes, why not consider it?